Take your CJ7 all the way to 11. Jeepers with cool guys. Well, let me start with apologizing for this mess. I happen to be in the middle of a CJ7 restoration. Uh, today, what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to take your dash lights and uh, replace them, fix them, um, get them all nice and polished up, and looking like the original. One of the things that's interesting th to me about these is they actually make a fairly decent uh, replacement for these. But the, the problem that you find is that the, the new ones, the replacements for these, aren't the same color. The reason behind that is because of what um, the actual plastic piece that the light shines through is backed with. So the newer replacement ones have a different kind of film um, on this plastic and it casts a different light. They may be brighter, but they look a little bit more like this. These are the original dash ones that I've already restored. And this is the original color. See how it's kind of got like a green tinge to it. The thing that's kind of cool about these is these are all the new casings. So my original Jeep, um, these all the casings were cracked and unusable. So I bought the new ones, but I replaced the placards with the originals. So I wanted to keep that original color. Here on the other side, this is the light switch. So you can see how it is blue. Um, but I didn't have, at that time, the original um, light placard. And I actually didn't realize that there was that much of a difference between the coloring. So anyways, off to the basement. Let's go and show you how to restore these things to get them back to this coloring. The proper coloring, the OEM coloring. As of right now, I've got five of the six that you'll actually need um, for the whole um, dash light uh, collection. The one that I'm missing is the air control, which is uh, off heat and vent. Um, but I've got the washer, wiper, uh, the lights, the defrost, the temperature, and the uh, the fan speed. What we're going to do is we're going to take the washer or wiper washer one and get it all nice and polished up, cleaned up, wiped up, looking just like this. You can see how it looks a heck of a lot better. Um, this one used to look exactly like this. So let's get to it. First thing you need to do is there are four tiny little metal tabs on the back part of this chrome frame. You need to get some a small pick or a very small screwdriver and bend these back up. You want to be very careful with doing these things. They're very fragile and if you break off the tab then you have no way of putting this thing back on. So just very gently get underneath there, wedge it up and flatten it up or flatten it out pointing up 90 degrees. And the cool thing about that is, is you only have to do two. So once you get those two then the rest of the the casing just lifts off. Now all you need to do is just lightly push your film lens if you want to call it that through your chrome. So now you really have just three pieces to this. They're very simple. Then grab a Dremel tool, or if you want, you could do it with steel wool. Just might take a little bit longer. And then just polish this thing up. You'll be amazed at how easily this thing comes back to life. So there we go. That top part is cleaned up. That part is the original. So you can see what I'm talking about. That's pretty cool. I like that. Just like new. 
And then, you know, if you want to keep going, you can put some polish on it, some chrome polish, and just keep buffing it out, and it'll eventually look exactly like this. These are just thin metal chrome frames. So a little intermission piece of information here. Um, I don't know what year they flipped over or changed over. I'm going to go with 82. So from 76 to 82, um, the indicator lights didn't have any icons or um, graphics on them. It was just this for the lights and for the wipers. So this is what the lights and the wipers looked like from 76 to 81. Because on the light switch, the actual switch itself, it has the light indicator. And on the wiper on the wiper switch, it actually has the wiper icon. This is 76 to 81. This is 82 to 86. Thought that was kind of interesting. Um, since I'm doing a CJ7 from 1979, these are the ones that I want to use. So this will go with my light switch. And this is going to go with my wipers. Now, let's clean this sucker up. All I'm going to do is just uh, use a little bit of soap and water um, and a toothbrush. You don't really have to worry about getting water in this thing. I mean, it, it's going to dry out. Um, but just scrub it down, um, get it all nice and clean. So I'm going to go over to the sink and do that real quick. One thing to note, when we're doing all of this, probably should make sure that this thing actually works. So you may have a short somewhere in your dash or the light doesn't work for whatever particular reason. Maybe there's some corrosion on the connection. So when you pull this thing out and you get to this point, just grab a 9 volt battery. And all you need to do is just put the two little pieces, or the two prongs, the positive and the negative, and see if the light lights up. That's pretty simple. So I, I've already tested all of these, but just to make sure. Actually, I'm going to turn the light out real quick. Let's check that out. See? There we go. That's what it looks like. That's the way the originals looked like. Now before we put this thing back together, we want to wipe this thing off a little bit. Just clean it off. Um, nice microfiber towel, just water. And you want to be very careful with it. So you just get everything off That's, that was on there before, just to make sure. Maybe you can clean off a little bit of the road dirt, but you don't want to scrub this thing because you don't want to wipe anything off that you can't fix or replace. All right, let's put it back together. Okay, so grab your newly polished chrome frame, slide your placard back in underneath the, uh, the prongs so it sits in there nice and gently. Then take your uh, casing, slide it underneath the two prongs that you did not bend out, slide it into the other side, and then very gently with a screwdriver, Bend them back into place. Make sure they're nice and tight. Check out the other side. And there we have our restored dash light. Now let's go and do the other light with the replacement casing um, and show you the difference in the coloring um, between the new ones and the original ones and why we're ultimately trying to stick with the original lighting. The aftermarkets are going to have a blue haze to them, like I'd show, or a blue color to them, as opposed to the more green color. This is very much like what I had showed you earlier on in the video um, of the ones that I had placed into my dash. So we're going to go for the OEM with the aftermarket casing. What we need to do for this is to take literally just the frame off and the, the lens and replace it with our original frame and the blue lens. That's it. So let's pop this sucker off here real quick. Bend these up straight. Now the reason I want to replace the, the frame, the chrome frame, with the original is because if you look at the detail between these two, it's close, but the bevel on the inside is not quite the same. We're going to get rid of that and just keep this. So now that we've got this all ready to go, all we need to do is 
slide that underneath those two tabs, get this into place, yay, awesome. And then bend those tabs down, and you have a fully restored, brand new casing, new light, everything in there, with the original frame and the original lens. All right, now that we've done all the other things to restore um, or get the uh, dash indicator lights um, back to an OEM look um, with new casings or old casings, um, another thing you could do is, if you wanted to, you could take your originals and upgrade to an LED light. First thing you'd need to do So this is the light and the plug out of one of the original casings. You can just uh, grab a 9 volt battery and you can kind of see it's not all that bright. Um, that's about as powerful as they were. Or if you wanted to, you could hook up an LED light and get something a little bit more like that. That's kind of bright. Original LED light. So let's do that real quick. Your biggest challenge is to get this plug, these uh, plug pieces, out of this casing without destroying the casing. Figured out a way to do that. There's a little plastic prong on the inside of this that notches into a little plastic or a little metal flange that comes out of the, the plug post. Maybe you can see it right there. It's uh, just a little bit of a notch. Really can't get anything in here to give you enough leverage to be able to push the, the metal prong away from that. So what I found is if you heat this up, you can easily slide it right through and you don't damage this or anything else. So let's grab a match. Apparently this is not a strike on box. And... You don't want to overheat this stuff. Just make it nice and simple. And what you do is you just kind of heat up the end of the post. Make sure you don't melt the plastic or put the plastic into the flame. Get it to where it starts to turn black. You know, starting to heat up a pretty good decent amount. Then grab a pair of pliers. and push it through. There you go. Now you've pulled this thing through without damaging this plastic casing. Alright, now that we've got both of the plugs out, actually this is, this is what you're going to have. You'll have your light bulb with the two little wires that connect to each post. Next step is to open up this clip part of the uh, the post. Um, the way that I've done that is you need something really thin, pliable. So I've used an X-Acto blade and all you do is just get it underneath that lip and just bend it up. You don't have to go real far, you just need enough to get that wire out. Okay, And there we have our light bulb and our two posts. Then once you've ordered these online, I'll put a link to Amazon on um, the, in the description for this video. But you can get various um, wattages or intensities of these lights, um, all different colors. This is just white, comes with a little diode on it, um, nothing really big. But they're not very expensive, they're also not all that well built, so you kind of have to be a little bit careful when you're actually doing this. So, what you want to do is you want to clip both of these things off with enough room to wrap the wire around the clip and be able to bend this thing out so that you can put it in the casing. So I usually go about here. This is really, really thin gauge wire. Like, uh, let's see, this thing goes 20. I would say this thing's probably 22 gauge wire. So there's not a whole lot to it. So you want to be kind of careful when you're stripping this thing out as to not tear apart the five, six strands of very thin copper wire on the inside of these things. All right, now that we've got them both stripped, twist the wire up 
so you can kind of keep it as tight as possible. And then grab one of your clips. Depending on how long you cut this thing, you might be able to wrap it around a couple times. Tuck it up underneath. And once you get that all nice and tight and in there, then grab your pliers and clamp down on that thing as hard as you can. Because you want to make sure that you get this thing in there nice and tight. And it is a very tiny wire. Okay, now we've got both of the posts done. The wires are wired in. Now comes the personalization part of this. When you put this thing back in here, you're going you're gonna to have much longer wires than you did with your original light bulb. So you want to be very careful in how you bend these wires out. Because um, you don't want to snap them off, obviously. At least with these, seem to be a little bit more of a solid wire up in here. And then you want to, at that point, put the post back into the slots. But you want to make sure that that little notch, um, retainer notch, goes to the inside of the actual housing. Go until you hear it click. There. All right. All right, we are in. Now the difficulty here is the positioning of the LED light. Because you really don't want to be too close to your facing because otherwise you're just going to get this really bright spot through here. But it is an LED light. They're very directional so it's kind of unavoidable. Go out to the craft store. Um, get this uh, foam stuff. Little Makers. It's six millimeter thick and it's just foam sheet black. I cut out a piece that will fit right inside of here and then you cut out a with your exacto blade you just kind of cut out a hole that's big enough for the LED and just kind of wedge this in here wedge the LED light into it kind of like that and what this helps do is position the LED light where you want it to go but like I said before be careful when you're moving this thing around in here because you don't want to bend the wires too much or break the wires because then you start all over again. So there we go. We've got it tucked down in there. Uh, the light bulb's pointing straight out and just to test it out again, let's see what this looks like. Pretty cool, huh? So we want to see what this looks like. I'm going to use my handy dandy little chrome frame. Put my piece in there. Well, let's go turn the light off. That looks really good to me. Super bright, pretty awesome. Okay, and then to finish this off, you do what um, we uh, did in the uh, previous part of this video. You bend the clips down, and you have an LED updated light. And that's how you make them. Well, that concludes this episode of Jeeping with Cool Guy, uh, another restoration video. Um, I was, I'm pretty excited about how these things all came out. Um, it's really a nice thing to be able to either upgrade something um, while keeping it original. You know, I'm, I'm a big time original equipment type of guy. You know, I want all this stuff to be as stock as possible. This is one of the very few things um, outside of like the HEI distributor install and a couple other minor things that I, I think um, are an improvement for the right reasons. Um, if you have another way of doing this uh, or if there was something that wasn't clear in how we all put these together, um, add comments, let me know. Um, I think that this is kind of a really neat way to do these um, and for the most part pretty sure that these light bulbs aren't going to burn out for a nice long time. So hopefully they'll outlast you.